on this program, The Grateful and the Dead. The United States just celebrated its birthday. Most people had a lot of fun. Some actually celebrated the United States of America. Some did not. One of the great things about this country is that its people are free to disparage it. And frankly, no matter what your political perspective, a lot of bad things can be said about the United States right now or at any point in its past. Maxine Waters reminded us that when the founders signed the document that says all men are created equal, they failed to live up to it. Some of those signers, including the author of those words, owned human beings. NPR made the same point, as if no one had ever thought of it before. Missouri Representative Cory Bush tweeted, Black people still aren't free, a sentiment that would have astonished and insulted the newly emancipated former slaves of 1863. I think we should honor the United States, not just as a matter of patriotism, but of gratitude. Being thankful is psychologically healthy, spiritually refreshing, and a key component to a successful society, business, church, or family. 2 Timothy 3 says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. This is talking about the last days. It says perilous times will come. Some translations say difficult times. Then it says why the last days will be perilous. It uses the word for. In the last days, perilous times will come for men will be. In this instance, for is interchangeable with the word because. So the days will be perilous because of the way people will think and act. And then it gives us a list of what people will be like in the last days, focusing mostly on attitudes. Human attitudes will make the last days perilous for humans. I want to focus on just one of those attitudes, ungratefulness. Here's what the Bible says. In the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be unthankful, often translated ungrateful. Attitudes and actions of ungratefulness will be one of the causes of last day's peril. I think we're seeing the beginning of this, but it will get worse. Now, all generations suffer from ungratefulness, just like all generations have wars and rumors of wars. But when the Bible singles out ordinary things as signs of the end times, it means those things will grow out of proportion in the last days. I've never seen anything like the ungratefulness that now characterizes much of our society. American attitudes toward the blessings of this nation make a great example. Former Senator Claire McCaskill has chosen to honor America in what seems like a bizarre way. She told MSNBC, we're going to start a new family tradition in my family. On the 4th of July and every 4th of July going forward, we're going to watch that video that the New York Times put together of January 6th. Why would she want to do that? Does she really find the events of January 6th the only thing in America worthy of celebration on July 4th? What about the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s? Does she find it more inspiring to watch a January 6th video than to reflect on Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech? What about Harriet Tubman, the amazing woman whose likeness will soon adorn $20 bills? Tubman was a Christian woman with a deep and abiding faith in God. A former slave, she overcame more than most of us can fathom to become a great and celebrated American leader. Armed with the shield of faith, she repeatedly placed herself in mortal danger while leading others to freedom. 
Looking back, she said, I was conductor of the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran the train off the tracks, and I never lost a passenger. But I'm sure if you look close enough, you will find flaws even in this extraordinary woman. The Bible says all have sinned. That's the state of humanity. There is none righteous. No, not one. Nations are made of people, so it's not surprising that nations are flawed. All nations. But if you live in the United States today, think for a moment about other places or times you might have been born into. How about being a woman in Saudi Arabia or a little girl in Afghanistan? We could spend hours enumerating the evils of communist China. The numbers of dead from that regime are like nothing else in all of history. No, it's not as bad today, but even now the communist government oppresses, tortures, demeans, humiliates, sends people to re-education camps, and sometimes even executes citizens on the basis of religious belief, skin color, or political ideas, ideas like freedom of speech or equal opportunity. Go around the world in your mind. Think about the best places to live. They are the places most influenced by the United States of America and the documents upon which this nation was founded. In 1776, the world had never seen anything like it. It's not about the beauty of the land. Purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain are great, but natural beauty does not make America great. Another kind of beauty does, the beauty of goodness and truth, of human rights and human dignity. We find American greatness in things like the freedom to say what you want when you want to say it and to worship God, if you believe in God, in the way you think God should be worshiped. I am grateful for those serving in the United States military. They and those who went before them make progress in areas like civil rights possible. And whether you agree with the decisions or not, ask yourself why U.S. forces went into Afghanistan or Iraq. Why did Americans fight in Vietnam? It certainly wasn't to gain beachfront property. Lyndon Johnson hated the Vietnam War. Early on, he sensed that it would be his undoing. Harry Truman hated the idea of sending U.S. troops into Korea, but he felt he had to stop the march of communism in that crucial part of the world. I'm not defending their choices. I'm pointing to their motivations. Why did the U.S. fight in World War II or World War I? Not to obtain land or glory, but to save the world. Why did young African Americans join the U.S. military in vast numbers for both world wars? They knew America's flaws. Oh boy, did they know them. But they also saw something worth fighting for, a hope for themselves and for their children and their children's children. I feel grateful for those heroes. I feel grateful for people we now call first responders, for firefighters, police, EMTs, hospital workers, and others. I feel grateful for the farmers and ranchers who together have created the greatest agriculture output in the history of the world. Most American jobs are jobs of service and care. I'm thankful for the American who made my hamburger and for the one who fixed my car. I'm thankful for teachers and preachers, flaws and all. I feel gratitude when I hear the words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Despite their many failings, our founders decided to build a nation on that, on that essentially theological idea. Did they live up to it? Do we? No. Liberals and conservatives alike find themselves falling short again and again. But what a North Star, created equal. What an ideal for which to aim and, 
and look how far it has led us. I'm thankful not just that God allowed me to be born in the United States of America, I'm thankful that He allowed you and me to be born into a world where the United States exists, where created equal and equal justice under law have become not universal realities, but universal ideals. That is a grace God has granted us, a grace that changes the world. Thanks for watching. God willing, I'll see you soon.